Now what I've got for us to take a look at today is a uh, little Yagi for the cellular networks. It's claimed to be a 3G, 4G Yagi. Now there's a couple of things that drew me to this uh, Yagi and um, one was it was pretty cheap. I uh, managed to get this for £11.50. It was the uh, seller's last one. Um, of course I had to pay VAT on that as well now. You have to pay VAT on uh, eBay. But um, the second thing is I don't think this is a 4G Yagi. I think it's uh, a 3G Yagi rebranded, but we'll find out in a moment. And the uh, third thing, the real thing that uh, brought me my attention to this was this double uh, reflective element that we've got going on here. <clears throat> I've never really seen that uh, kind of thing outside of a TV aerial, let's say. Uh, you see that a lot on TV aerials. I mean, I remember the turn of the millennium when we started to switch off normal TV signals here in the UK and go digital. There was a lot of scams um, going around with uh, TV aerial upgrades, let's say. Uh, one of my uh, former neighbours had this massive thing put on top of his uh, roof. Paid a lot of money for it because uh, the uh, guy who sold it to him convinced him that... Uh, it's what he needed to get a crystal uh, clear picture of course uh, there was a lot of scams going around at that time but uh, yeah the uh, double uh, reflectors on here I'm not sure what's going on there I mean I've done a little search on some information and the only information I could find with having a double reflector is back in the day before we got decent test equipment um, it was thought that you'd get a better front to back ratio by having the double reflectors but you know since we've found out uh, over the last few decades when uh, test equipment has really become available to the general public and uh, the universities that it really has no effect having a uh, you know a double reflector or even a you know a big piece of metal let's say a more traditional reflector on the back of here has no effect over the front to back ratio of a uh, Yagi but uh, let's take this over to the network analyzer see if it is a uh, 4G antenna I don't think it is it does say on here I'll just zoom in so it does say on here frequency uh, call that 700 megahertz to uh, 960 megahertz 1710 to uh, 2700 megahertz so yeah if it does hit those frequencies it is a uh, 3G 4G antenna um, 7 to 9 dB of gain uh, I don't think so, it's probably going to be more like uh, 7 dB of gain and a VSWR of 1.5 so uh, let's hook it up and see if we do hit any of those frequencies so here it is on the test bench and I've made this little uh, rig to hold it in place while we uh, test it on the network analyzer so let's have a look at uh, the kind of frequencies that this will operate on then shall we so here we are looking at it on the network analyzer then we're scanning from 500 megahertz over here all the way up to 3 gigahertz and first thing we can see is we're not getting any response whatsoever in those higher frequencies i've got the cursor on uh, 2 gigahertz there and that is where it stops it goes up to about 2.1 gigahertz just there and after that this antenna is not responsive in those higher frequencies so i do think this is a uh, 3g yagi that's just been rebranded as 4g and uh, yeah it's uh, certainly not responsive in those higher frequencies but we've got this nice dip here around uh, 2 gigahertz 1.9 gigahertz we've got this other secondary response here around about 1.5 gigahertz um, i don't think that's intentional it's uh, probably just down to the design of the yagi and here we've got uh, this frequency response around about the 700, 800, 900 megahertz there. So, yeah, not particularly impressive. It does work around uh, 2 gigahertz, as I say, 1.9 to 2 gigahertz. But apart from that, it's most certainly not a 4G Yagi. Now, as we saw in the network analyzer, it most definitely is not a 4G Yagi. It doesn't come anywhere close to those higher frequencies that you need for 4G. Um, it's not responsive at all above 2 gigahertz. Um, 
and as I said, they've probably just stuck 4G on this just to uh, get rid of some old stock. You see it quite often on eBay and uh, Banggood and lots of these places. And to be quite honest with you, um, unless you've got test equipment, you're probably not going to know. You probably uh, connect this up, get a pretty poor signal really, and you think, oh, maybe I just need a bigger Yagi. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't really notice probably, but yeah it's it's not a 4g antenna at all definitely a 3g rebranded just to get rid of some old stock now i have gone in with the measurements i'm not going to take measurements of this because it's it's nothing special don't really want to recreate this but uh, the measurements in between these driven elements is a little bit off um they're all a little bit different but it's quite wide in between here than it is these two areas here and that's probably just down to uh, build quality we've got the big driven element here the uh, folded uh, dipole arrangement there uh, it probably has got a ballon underneath there um, as i said it probably made for a, a uh, 3g uh, yagi and they probably did stick a ballon in there but uh, i'll take a quick look in a moment but what is uh, most interesting to me is these uh, double reflectors here um i really want to know uh, what um, role they're playing and I'm, I'm thinking of uh, removing this smaller reflector here just drilling out the rivet remove it take it back over to te the test bench and see what that does that, that should be interesting um, and as I've shown in uh, previous videos especially the sleeve dipole uh, the ground plane can play a big part over the uh, overall frequency of that particular antenna so I'm wondering if this is uh, changing things slightly so it hits the 800 uh, megahertz uh, frequencies um, you know while it's still performing at uh, 800 megahertz 900 megahertz so I wonder if that's the role that this little uh, reflector is playing just you know messing around uh, with the uh, overall dimensions and uh, the frequency response of this driven element and making it responsive at 1800 megahertz so yeah let's remove this take it over to the test bench and we'll have a look now that i've removed that second back reflector the smaller one i'm not getting the response that uh, i thought i would have got we can see here we've got this very very nice little dip here round at the 2 gigahertz region there 2.2 gigahertz going up 2.3 going up 2.4 gigahertz so yeah that is become much more broadband 1.9 gigahertz there and a lot deeper a lot nicer the uh, that dip we were getting around uh, 1.4 gigahertz has completely disappeared now and we can go into the uh, 900 megahertz which is all but disappeared and we've got this little dip here around about uh, 600 megahertz but it's nothing to write home about completely changed the characteristics i was expecting it to be more responsive at those lower frequencies around 800 megahertz but no it's much more responsive uh, around 2 gigahertz so very very strange not sure what's going on with that uh, second uh, reflector i mean the smaller one does seem to uh, have some effect on the uh, frequency of the main driven element and the overall frequency of the uh, Yagi itself but not what I was expecting not really sure what's going on but uh, it's interesting all the same so an interesting outcome then um, not what I was expecting by removing this uh, smaller reflector here um, it became uh, a lot more responsive higher up in the frequencies than it did uh, lower down um, I don't know uh, I'm not sure what's going on but this is I've said previously in other videos that I don't like computer programs I'm a hand-on person uh, I get more enjoyment on uh, building and testing and building and testing but I think this is one of those uh, occasions when uh, simulating something like this in a computer program uh, would be really beneficial rather than making uh, lots of yagis and probably would help to understand what's going on here and the relationship between this smaller reflector with the main driven element with the overall frequency of this yagi um, yeah i do think this uh, is one of those occasions when software uh, would be a lot better to uh, pursue uh, this idea and uh, try and figure out what's exactly going on but maybe some of you Yagi aficionados out there would know exactly what's going off uh, with the second 
uh, reflector I had a, as I said I had a quick look around the internet I couldn't really find any information on there but uh, you know I'm not very knowledgeable on Yagi's as I've said previously I never really got into them until a few years ago but uh, yeah it's interesting it, this is the kind of thing I like to get in where it uh, you know and we end up at the end of the video with more unanswered questions than uh, we began with and uh, the overall question with this Yagi though is it doesn't work at 4G it is a rebranded uh, 3G Yagi it just does not work even with this smaller reflector here it does not work in those upper 4G frequencies and as for the uh, overall measurements of this Yagi the directors here are uh, spaced out in roughly in the kind of uh, measurements that you would tend to find in a uh, 2.4 gigahertz Yagi they are very very similar of course the main driven element is oversized it's probably double what it needs to be for the, those mid-range uh, 2 gigahertz frequencies but certainly the spacing and uh, the length of these uh, directors these parasitic elements are kind of in the region where you want to be uh, looking if you wanted to build uh, say a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Yagi but uh, yeah I think now that we have moved this uh, smaller one as well this smaller um, uh, reflector here from uh, the back uh, this is probably too far away uh, from here you know possibly again if uh, we hooked it up and moved this one much closer to the main driven element we might even get a another different response I don't know but uh, yeah certainly not a 4g yagi anyway but uh, still interesting and as for the balance it's one of those loop balance like we've seen previously on this channel you can see uh, we've got some coax it will run through here and then it's soldered down into there we've got a brass shim there that it's soldered onto and just uh, forced in uh, to the uh, aluminium so it makes contact on this side um, very very simple ballon very very effective ballon uh, the same ballon uh, that's used on the uh, turbo tenor uh, Yagi's uh, that Danettes claim they own the patents for but uh, no they don't it's uh, a very old design it's been around a lot a lot of years as this type of ballon and uh, we've seen it previously in uh, a uh, 3G 4G Yagi that we looked at uh, probably a few months ago now probably getting on for a year ago but uh, the exact same uh, ballon that's in there nice effective ballon pretty simple to do as well so hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video um, I mean uh, we set out to answer the question on uh, whether it was a uh, 4G Yagi or not and it most certainly is not a 4G Yagi it's a uh, 3G uh, Yagi rebranded to try and get rid of old stock and as I've said you know unless you had test equipment you'd hook this up you probably would just think it's a poor antenna but no it's uh, certainly not made for those uh, higher frequencies for the 4G network but uh, it's always interesting when we find something like this that uh, you know leads more questions that we can look at in the future um, I mean maybe you know what's going off with this uh, second reflector here but I certainly don't um, and it's going to be interesting finding out as well but uh, yeah typical uh, ballon you get with these as well uh, as I've shown in a previous video so yeah if you enjoyed it please give it a uh, thumbs up uh, comments or questions drop them below I'll do my best to answer them um, especially if you know anything about these uh, Yagis with two reflectors you know what is the uh, idea behind them and some of the theory behind them what what it actually does to the main driven element and the overall frequency of the antenna please uh, let us know in the comments but uh, if, as I said if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one